The tools needed to splice AFL spiderweb ribbon include, but are not limited to, a Fujikura 70R Fusion Splicer, proper fiber holdings for splicing. The FH5012N is optimized for consistent splicing of AFL WTC SWR fiber. The FH5012 or 12N may be used for splicing SWR or standard matrix ribbon. However, the FH5012N holders are recommended for SWR to provide better consistency with fiber placement in the V-grooves. An RSO3 thermal stripper. A small brush for cleaning debris during splicing. And a CT30 high precision cleaver. An optional AFL V-groove cleaning kit can be used to easily clean fusion splicing equipment and V-grooves. Consumables you will need when splicing AFL spiderweb ribbon include lint-free Kim wipes or equivalent wipes, AFL fiber cleaner and preparation fluid, FCC2 or equivalent cleaning fluid, and an AFL FPO5 40 mm 12 fiber ribbon splice protection sleeve. The fusion splicer must be set to splice 12 fibers using the correct splice mode either single or multi-mode fiber. The heater needs to be set for the appropriate 40 mm 12 fiber mass splice protection sleeve. A high heat setting on the thermal stripper is recommended for stripping spider web ribbon. The setting that is correct on the RSO3 is number four. One aspect of splicing SWR that must be addressed prior to splicing is the cleanliness of the equipment and work area. The splicer and its V-grooves must be free of dust and debris. The fiber holder and retention pads must be clean and free of dust and debris. The thermal stripper needs to be thoroughly cleaned before starting a project, as well as cleaned after each use. Ensure there is no dust or debris on the fiber holder channel, the blades, and especially the stripping channel and retention pads. Remove all dust and debris from the fiber cleaver. Clean the fiber holder channel, the top and bottom retention pads, and the fiber rollers. Once the equipment is clean, your work area needs to be clean and free of items which may snag fibers. Create a snag-free work area of your choice. This includes your hands and fingers, which must be cleaned of all dirt and contamination. Lastly, when working with spiderweb ribbon, Avoid overhandling the bundles and strands. Now the fiber needs to be prepared to be spliced. Depending on the manufacturer of the tray, spider web ribbon can be secured with AFL foam retention pads, or it may enter the tray using transition tube. Binders should be tied and cut at the tray entrance to maintain traceability. Measure and cut the first fiber to be spliced to the appropriate length. With spider web ribbon, it is possible to store at least one service loop in the tray. Slide splice protection sleeves onto the fiber groups to be spliced. Before aligning fibers, make sure your hands are free of any dirt or contamination. Take 18 to 24 inches of fiber and align the length by sliding your fingers up the fibers slowly. Ensure the fibers are oriented correctly and none are crossed. Repeat this process on the last six inches of fiber to be spliced. AFL recommends a consistent method of loading fibers into fiber holders. This helps preserve orientation and prevents transposition. Always install ribbon fiber with the blue fiber toward the hinge of the fiber holder and always install the fiber holder into the fusion splicer with the hinge to the heater. Install the fibers into the fiber holder with about 4 inches exposed. Make sure the blue fiber is to the hinge. Maintain the fibers in the fiber holder channel and slowly draw them back until there is approximately 1 inch exposed. Examine for any crossed fibers or debris. If present, crossed fibers or debris can cause broken fibers in the stripping, cleaving, or splicing process. The fiber should be removed and reset into the fiber holder. Slowly secure the clamps of the fiber holder in place. Make sure all 12 fibers are fully seated in the fiber holder and in the correct orientation. Keep the amount of fiber that is splayed to a minimum. 
Inspect the thermal stripper to be sure it is clean and ready for use. This includes checking the stripping channel, the slide, the blades, as well as the friction pad. Insert the loaded fiber holder into the thermal stripper and ensure it is fully seated. Confirm that all fibers are lying flat in the stripping channel and that they are not crossed. Verify that the proper length of fiber to be stripped is ready and then slowly close the cover of the thermal stripper. Once the cover is closed, firm pressure needs to be applied at the thumb locations on each side of the blades. Firm pressure needs to continue through the entire stripping process. After the heater light turns from red to green, open the slide in a steady, firm motion while maintaining pressure on each thumb location. Continue to slide the thermal stripper to the open position. Open the carrier cover and confirm that all coating has been removed. If any coating remains, this step will need to be repeated. Once all coating is removed, slide the fiber holder out, being careful not to damage the exposed 125 micron fibers. Inspect the holder to confirm that all 12 fibers are present and not damaged. Set the fiber holder with the strip fiber in a safe location. Clean all debris from the thermal stripper. Ensure that the channel blades and pad are clean and ready for the next fibers. Clean fibers are essential to successful splicing and maintaining proper equipment performance. Dampen a lint-free wipe with AFL Fiber Prep Fluid or other approved cleaner. This fluid and cleaning material is a product recommendation. Local practice and approved product will be used. Clean a group of fibers until a squeak is heard. Use a clean surface on the fibers for each pass. Flick the fibers to align them and remove any adhesion from the cleaning fluids. Inspect the fibers and ensure all are free of cleaning fluid. Ensure there are no broken or crossed fibers. They should be in the proper orientation for splicing and not splayed excessively. A high precision cleaver is needed when splicing ribbon fiber an AFL CT30 will be used in this training video. Be sure the CT30 is activated and ready to cleave. Inspect the cleaver blade region to ensure it is free of fiber shards. Install the loaded fiber holder into the cleaver. Make sure it is fully seated and snapped down. Ensure all 12 fibers are long enough to be resting on the rubber roller. Make sure the fibers are not too long or bowed from the cleaver end. Ensure that the fibers are flat on the cleave platform and that they are not crossed. There should be no debris visible. Depress the top of the CT30 firmly to activate the cleave action. Advance the fiber chart collection wheel, if applicable, and then remove the fiber holder for inspection. Examine for damaged or missing fibers. Do not re-clean after cleaving. Set the fiber holder into the splicer with the hinge side towards the heater. This helps prevent transposition while ribbon splicing. Ensure that it is firmly seated and that the fiber exiting the splicer will not pinch or bind when the covers are closed. Confirm that all 12 fibers are properly seated in the appropriate V-grooves and that there is no visible debris. If the fibers are not aligned properly, remove the fiber holder and place it again. If it is still not aligned, a lint-free swab or similar item may be used to manually manipulate the fibers to help seat them. Repeat this process on the fibers to be spliced to. Once the second fiber holder has been installed, the 70R will activate, automatically closing the splice chamber covers and initiating the splice process. Once the splice is completed, the 70R automatically opens the splice cover. Compare the splice results to local splice requirements. The mechanical strength of the splice has been tested by a proof test. If the splice has defects or does not meet the minimum loss requirements, the splice will have to be broken and the process repeated. Position the splice sleeve close to the fiber holder and lift the clamp on the opposite side to release the tension on the fibers from the proof test. Support the splice sleeve and release the second fiber holder clamp. Holding the fibers taut, use the positioning ribs on the heater to center the splice sleeve over the splice. 
Keep tension on the fibers and lower the centered splice sleeve with the glass stress rod below the splice into the heater. This will trigger the 70R's heater cover to close and initiate the heater. Remove the heated sleeve and inspect for defects. It is common for SWR to appear rolled in the sleeve. This is not a defect. Set the splice sleeve to cool prior to installing it into a splice tray. AFL reminds you that cleaning is essential to successful splicing. Splicing should be conducted in a snag-free, well-organized work area. Equipment should be calibrated and cleaned. Fusion splicers should be properly arc calibrated. Accurate counts of cleaves should be noted before rotating or replacing blades. Thermal strippers should be cleaned and properly adjusted. SWR should not be overhandled at the point you wish to splice.